Hey guys, Tony from Maryland and Delaware Herping, and this is the continuation of our winter videos because we can't herp outside anymore, so we're going to look at my pets and some other people's pets. Yes, my hair is nuts. I debated whether I was going to comb it today or not, and I didn't because it's Saturday and I didn't have to, so I hope you guys still accept me. But... We are on the last of my pets this week because I currently only own four reptiles because I have limited space. So what do we do? Just like we've done the past, I guess, three weeks now, we're going to go over something's temperament when it's being handled, feeding, and cost. Those three things are what we usually consider when we're getting a pet, especially a reptile. So without wasting any more time, let me go over our final Tony Ferrazzo pet because after this we're going to have to start moving on other people's pets until I get another pet reptile. So the next episode probably won't take place in my room. But this is the pet of the week and most people will know this because this is the only one we haven't seen yet. So here we go. This is Maria and she is my baby speckled king snake and she is ferocious she struck at me several times taking her out of her enclosure she musked on me and that's kind of the usual for her now these guys are not native to this area they are probably the closest cousin to the snake that is native to this area the eastern king snake speckled king snakes are usually down in kind of like the American South, so Alabama, Mississippi, over to Louisiana, maybe up north a little bit, but these guys are solid snakes. Um, king snakes have always been one of my favorites because they are ferocious. They have a reputation for eating other snakes, which is pretty nuts, especially poisonous snakes like rattlesnakes and copperheads. But one of the things that... Uh, I want to talk about is you know are they popular pets and that is yes especially it's taking a strike at me there california king snake um florida king snake several different species of milk snake which are also king snakes they're all part of the lampropeltis genus but i got her back in i think it was june and i got her from my buddy rick crumrine he's a reptile breeder out of Pennsylvania. I'll put his info in the link. Great breeder. He's got multiple different species to pick from. So I think Maria here is about several months old and she she's an animal. She really is. Baby king snakes um, can be a little bit nippy, but once they're adults, they usually relax a little bit. You know, she's still even though I handle her often, hasn't quite understood that I'm not here to eat her. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, you know, our three main categories, temperament, feeding, cost. So <clears throat> start off with temperament. Now, as I discussed earlier, king snakes, especially when they're babies, they can be a little bit nippy, kind of similar to boa constrictors, but a little bit more tenacious. You know, she, it's not often that she's going to strike me when I take her out of her cage, but it does happen, you know, especially if I'm not careful with it. But one thing about her is she's just, you know, they're little. The world's a scary place when you're this size and she's like, this guy could eat me, so I'm going to give him everything I got. But her bite, especially at this size, it doesn't even break the skin, so it's not something to really be afraid about. They are always on the move. That's one thing with king snakes. They're not really a chill snake to handle, especially when they're smaller. You know, they'll be like this, and then out of nowhere, they'll be darting to the floor. So you do kind of got to hold on to them. But because like rat snakes and other snakes, they are constrictors, they do kind of hold on to you. They've got like that, that like muscle, like they're giving you a hug. But another thing is these guys are very food aggressive. So... You want to kind of establish that relationship when you get your king snake like this is feeding time this is handling time because when they get older 
they will kind of mix that up and you might get bit now i just absolutely love this uh pattern right here in this color because it looks like a mini jungle carpet python and they're one of my favorite snakes that i'd love to own someday but <clears throat> yeah these guys are great so yeah for handleability like i said they might nip at you here and there and that might be the only reason I might recommend against getting a king snake if you're a first time snake owner because they can be a bit nippy sometimes, you know, like I said, especially when they're babies. But it's not anything to really be afraid of. Even when they're adults and they do bite you, it's not going to be anything more severe than just some minor bleeding, like if you got pricked with a small needle, that's all. But other than that, like I said, they're handleable, they're not dangerous at all. And so i think it's still a good beginner snake like i said i might recommend it just because they're a bit nippy that may scare some children that are trying to get into owning reptiles but at the same time uh it's a good snake to get bit by because it doesn't do much damage you know if you're going to get like a blood python or something like that that has a bitey reputation that can actually you might have to get stitches for that if you get bit but with these guys it's nothing serious you know and if you're a person that's catching reptiles in the wild, you know, kind of like we do on this channel, you know, catch, not catch and sell, but catch, take pictures of, and then release them where we found them, you're going to get bit from time to time, you know, and that just happens. So it's a good thing to get used to if you're looking to get into this hobby. Bringing us to our second category of feeding. I don't think it gets any better than these guys. These guys are complete monsters when it comes to feeding they love to eat they have one of the most ferocious feeding responses of any snake like i said i think they outdo boa constrictors and several other famous you know feeding response snakes because every time i feed her one mouse pinky a week frozen thawed and i've fed her fuzzies before but it takes her she has a little bit of a harder time uh, getting those down where the mouse pinky she has them down in like two minutes and I'm not into power feeding No offense to anybody that is but I just want her to take her time growing So I still do the mouse pinkies and she does just fine with them I lower it in on the tongs and she just hits it so hard and she still constricts um, Unfortunately, she did try to eat herself one time because she was so excited to eat and I had the tongs in there and uh <clears throat> it took a minute before I could uh, <laughs> help her figure out that she was not the meal, you know. But uh, these guys are great eaters. They do not skip meals. And, you know, it's best to do frozen thaw. They will constrict. They are killers. But, you know, you don't want to take that risk because the snake still could get injured. But that's just my personal opinion. So for feeding, you're going to... Like I said, once a week, when they get older, you might have to switch it up to every 10 days or so, but they'll still eat, and they're the type of snake that you could have to worry about obesity with because they love to eat so much. Now, our third category of cost, the snake itself, I got her when she was just a little, little baby, and I think it was around a little bit over 100 which is a, you know, average price dependent on the breeder. But, I mean, king snakes, whether it's a speckled king snake, eastern king, black Mexican king, or a California or Florida king, prairie, um, and the millions of other uh, species and subspecies, they're going to be available at a lot of pet stores, a lot of uh, reptile expos, and they're going to be available online too. So, definitely. Whoa, was that a strike? Better watch it. I'm the one that feeds you. Now, I love her. She doesn't love me, but I do love her. She's beautiful. I can't wait till she grows up. So the actual snake itself, um, the cost of feeding the snake, very cheap in my opinion, especially with how expensive some species can be. Now, the actual enclosure, I'll show you right here, is not anything, you know, too big at all. So take a look at this. So right here, as you can see, this is just like a 10 gallon enclosure. Just, uh, I need to get some clamps. I'm using books to keep that down. That's not always the safest thing to do. But I use aspen bedding. She likes to burrow down in that. 
over here is where her heat pad is, and it's just a small heat pad, but I've also got a little dome lamp right here that's letting off some light too. It keeps it just at the right temperature. And I've got like some bark right there. Now that bark is not anything fancy, it's just from my backyard. And it allows her to burrow into the aspen bedding and to get under there and keep warm. So it's kind of like a warm hide. Got her water bowl, a branch to climb on. They're not too semi-arboreal like rat snakes, but they will climb. And then I've got a cool hide right here. So, you know, just the basics, but this is not going to be her permanent home because she is going to get bigger. So she's going to need something probably like a three by two. So once she starts to outgrow this, I'm either going to build or have a custom one built. And then that'll be her permanent home. But for now, this will do her because she's not even as long as the entire cage. And I take her out and handle her a lot. So, yeah, pretty simple enclosure. I think all of this right here was under 100 bucks. You can kind of see from the expo where I bought it. That's uh, 25 not 65 right there. So, yeah, this 10-gallon was 25 The light was probably the most expensive part. But, yeah, like I said, pretty affordable, pretty simple. But obviously this can't be your king snake's enclosure for the rest of its life. But if you're just getting a baby, something like this is perfect. So yeah, nothing uh, too out of control with these guys. Like I said, I'd recommend, you know, keeping them in something that, you know, gives them enough space to move around because they will be active snakes, you know. And you can give them stuff to climb on too because as you can see, they do hang on. You know, they will climb, but it's not like a rat snake, you know, where they will actually use that because they do it in the wild. These guys in the wild are going to be hiding under a lot of debris and stuff like that during the day. You might see them out moving around, but it's not something they do often, especially when they're little, you know. But I love king snakes. I really do. Um, I used to own them all the time when I was a little kid, but I wasn't experienced, you know, so... I didn't have much success, but this is the first one that I've owned in a couple years, and she has been a delight. She is an awesome feeder. She has an attitude when handling a lot, but she's getting better. Um, she didn't bite me at all through this filming, so that's a plus. But, I mean, she's just so cool to watch. I love wa watching her feed out of any of the snakes that I own, and she's easy to house. I can't wait to move her into a bigger enclosure when she grows. And like I said, I think that king snakes are good beginner snakes because they're manageable. They're at a good size. You know, the only thing is for being a small, smaller, mid-sized snake, they act like big snakes. If king snakes were 16 feet long, I would never leave my house because these guys are monsters. And like I said, they love to eat. But thank God. They only get to be about four to five feet long, so we don't got to worry about that. And they will take care of our rodent problem for us, because they're awesome. But that's all we got for this one. Hopefully next week we'll have another animal to feature. But thank you guys for watching, and we'll have something for you soon. Say bye, Maria.